This is Aswani Gupta, Nissan's just fired COO. The shocking revelation of Nissan's illegal surveillance of him raises serious questions about the company's ethical boundaries. And now, one cannot help but wonder if they have committed similar illegal acts against Carlos Ghosn. Nissan faced a major setback when its debt was downgraded to junk status, making it exceedingly difficult for them to secure loans. This prompted the company to embark on a transformation, aiming to become a leading electric vehicle manufacturer. While some may argue that Nissan already produces the Nissan LEAF, an EV, the reality is that only a meager 2% of Nissan's global sales are electric. In other words, a whopping 98% of their vehicles are not EVs. This year, their struggles have been particularly pronounced in China, a critical market for Nissan. China represents its largest customer base and sales location by a wide margin. However, Nissan's sales in China have taken a severe hit, plummeting by 40% so far this year and continuing to decline. Currently, Nissan has only one car that is selling decently in China, and it's not an EV, it's a sedan. One can't help but question how long this situation will persist. Shortly after these challenges arose, Nissan's COO was abruptly fired. Ever since Carlos Ghosn's dramatic escape from Japanese authorities, whom some argue are corrupt, Nissan has been on a downward trajectory. While there are many Nissan enthusiasts out there, personal sentiments don't hold much weight when it comes to uncovering the truth. The company is bracing itself for further management turmoil with the departure of COO Aswani Gupta, who played a crucial role in spearheading the company's revitalization plan, often found himself at odds with Nissan's CEO, board, and alliance partner Renault. Gupta, once seen as a potential future CEO of Japan's third largest automaker, will leave Nissan on June 27th to explore other opportunities as announced in a statement on June 16th. If you happen to watch the documentary on Netflix about the upheaval surrounding Carlos Ghosn and Nissan, you may have been deceived into believing some absurd notions about the company. Nissan's hierarchy, management board, and layers of bureaucracy are laughable, to say the least. The place is riddled with problems, and that is one of the key reasons why Nissan finds itself in such disarray. Gupta played a pivotal role in leading Nissan's recovery plan, which faced significant challenges after Ghosn's departure and strained relations with Renault. Amid declining sales, profits, and share prices, Gupta stood out as a beacon of hope. While he successfully stabilized profitability, Nissan's global sales volumes still lags far behind the levels seen during Carlos Ghosn's tenure. The company faced obstacles such as the COVID-19 pandemic and the global semiconductor shortages, as well as slow introductions of new models like the Aria all-electric crossover and the rebranded Z Sports car, which hampered overall momentum. Despite Gupta's efforts, Nissan's stock price remains nearly 50% lower than its value prior to Ghosn's arrest. In stark contrast, Toyota Motor Corporation experienced a remarkable 70% surge during the same period. Gupta's departure follows the exit of the head of Infinity in March. Payment H. Carger returned to Renault and it was recently replaced by Jose Roman. According to Automotive News, Gupta, aged 52, was perceived internally as occasionally clashing with 56-year-old CEO Makoto Uchida over his aspirations to succeed Uchida in the Japanese hierarchy. Japan's hierarchical rules are known to be archaic and peculiar, a sentiment shared by countless individuals who have worked in the country. It's unlikely that Gupta's intention was to vie for Uchida's position, Instead, he was likely advocating for the necessary decisions to revive the company. However, the CEO seemed displeased, feeling his toes had been stepped on and his public image undermined. The issue at hand was the concept of losing face, a significant concern in Japanese culture. Over the past year, tensions between Gupta and Uchida became more apparent as Nissan engaged in discussions with Renault to rebalance their cross-shareholdings and invest in Renault's planned spin-offs. Gupta made it clear from the start that his goal was for Nissan to become number one, which was not well received internally. Nonetheless, Gupta successfully implemented the recovery plans and achieved the financial targets, propelling the company into a new era with a new midterm plan. 
Interestingly, the company openly admitted that its current profitability is largely due to Gupta's efforts, and now that they have his plans, they are willing to let him go. In May, Gupta was removed from the Nissan board and the company announced its new director candidates, another individual, Masakazu Toyoda, who was perceived by outsiders as a Nissan nationalist impeding cooperation with Renault, was also dismissed. Insiders reveal that the leaders aim to consolidate support for Utida in order to expedite action on the new Renault plan. Removing Toyota was seen as a means to sharpen management's focus on Uchida's agenda, which involved swiftly rebalancing ties with Renault and investing in Renault's electric vehicle spin-off venture, Ampere. Initially, these discussions were expected to conclude by the end of 2022, but delays occurred. A basic agreement was only announced in February, and the final details of the investment plans are still being negotiated. Uchida believes that Nissan needs to accelerate its pace and disrupt traditional business practices, as some Alliance members grow frustrated with the sluggish rate of change.